All right, Craig, there's still free agents out there. So we picked um, five, and we're going to look at those five and see if there's any that the Lions should still consider. And you and I both think there are a couple that we really like. So I'm going to throw it to you, Craig. I'm going to, we got an article from Lions Wire that has five potential free agents. You tell me if you like them, don't like them, and where we're at. So do a little one by one type situation. A little one by one. The first one is one by one. Hakeem Hicks, D lineman. Thoughts on this guy? Look at that. He's look at that big boy, right? Look at that belly. (laughs) Here's the deal. I think uh, he's not young. That's for sure. He's 32. He's played well for the Chicago Bears, at least decent. Um, I think that defensive tackle is still one area where I'm wondering if we could maybe use a little bit of help. And so, I mean, we got, I think we're two, three deep at that spot. And I'd like to be four deep of solid players. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would be all for this one. I think bringing him in one year contract, uh, toward the end of his career, but he can come in and just at least provide a body on the interior to help with the run defense. Absolutely. And if he, maybe he doesn't even make the team, but bring him in, just get some, a look at him, but I'm with you. I don't know our depth. Um, and the D line and it would like it a little bit better. So, well, I mean, it's either him or John Penasini. What would you rather have? I guess, I guess that's kind of where I'm at. And I think at this point in the careers, I'd probably still take a flyer on Hicks. Absolutely. Yep. Um, the next one is Joe Schobert linebacker 28 getting older, but still available. Uh, thoughts on him. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in on him. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason I'm in on him is because when I did a connected franchise with Madden, he was my middle linebacker, uh, for the Browns. And, uh, I played with him every single snap because I was the guy who played middle linebacker. Sometimes I'd play free safety, let's be honest. But, uh, so I actually do, I like what he brings. Uh, I think he would be similar to what you could get from Alex Anzalone, uh, but maybe at a higher level, to be honest. So, it kind of makes sense and it kind of doesn't. I think he's one of those guys where if he's still sitting there and if we get him, that means that we're not confident in some of the back end of our linebacking core. And we're like, no, we need a little more depth in here and we need it right now. So he's not a bad player. No, not a bad player in, in a guy that we have a, we have a rookie um, in Malcolm Rodriguez. We have Barnes who's on a second year who we don't know about. We have Jared mm-hmm. Davis. I don't know. Anzalo. So I don't like our linebacker room right this second. And he instantly gives us just some stability there. So I, that's another, that's my top guy right there that I, I you really see like. his stats by the way. No, um, he's logged 661 <laughs> tackles, 11 sacks, 10 forced fumbles in his career. Yeah. Like, like it is, it is pretty shocking that a team hasn't picked him up. It's not like this is a journeyman linebacker here. I mean, like he's a good linebacker. Absolutely. Now he he's has a good number ninety three to really throw you off. Really throw you off like he's a yeah. I don't know what's player. going on there. That's not what he usually wears. Don't worry. Okay. About it. Okay. I think Thank he's you. usually number fifty three. When okay, he was that's for, much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cohen, that's funny. If you're ninety three, you're like a weird edge linebacker. Oh, I don't like that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, you're asking me about Tariq Cohen? Yeah, Is that Tariq what you Cohen. said? Yeah, I like this. I, I don't care what you say. I like this more than as a third running back, a receiving threat. Um, you know, we've had injury issues with Swifty. I like Swift, obviously, considerably more than Tariq Cohen. But I do think that he would be a valuable third down back. And I think he provides a little more... Um, obviously awareness and maturity than someone like a Jamar Jefferson or, or or something along those lines. I would rather have Tariq Cohen as a guy that you can bring in at minimum as a third down back and possibly even some special team stuff. Yeah, I believe I, you know, I thought he was older for some reason. So seeing him at, well, he's a running back, so he may as well be 32. Yeah. And he, I feel like we have, we have more holes or more, you know, Hey, let's try this guy out at, you know, like we just talked about linebacker and D line. So he's not one that it's high on my priority priorities, but I, I like his, I like him. I think he's a, he's a lesser version, a more stable version than Swifty, but he's, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not in love with him, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it either. Yeah. I, mean, um, I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem. He's had some really productive years. He, I mean, obviously yes. now he was behind David Montgomery, 
um, in Chicago, but like the dude did some special things. He did tear his ACL. So I don't know what he has left, but I think it's worth, I think you could get him on a real cheap deal. Yeah. And he, he, he's been a problem for us. Um, I always feel like he's running free a little bit against the Lions, So he's, he can play. Um, what about a lot of running backs have been a problem for us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Trey <laughs> Hopkins, kind of a interior offensive lineman thoughts on him. Yeah, my thoughts on him are less about him because if I actually knew how good of a player he was, I'd be way more of a nerd than I actually am. And I am a nerd, um, but uh, I don't know a ton. What I do know is that I think we need a quality guy who can be kind of that backup guard role. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I mean, yeah, Brown is, has been proven that he can be a good backup center, but we have kind of that swing guard I would like to have so that we can bring eight linemen into each game. And, uh, I don't see that right now on the roster and I don't want to trust a UDFA to become that guy. Um, and, or what is it? McCallum, um, McCullough or whatever it is. Um, Steinberg. Um, yeah, I, I think Logan Stenberg. No, mm. no. So like as much as I loved him coming out of, I think it was Kentucky and like he had his own clothing line and oh. like, he was a, like just loving this dude. But, uh, yeah, not, not good. I, and so I think they re-signed that, what is it, McCullough, and I just don't know if he's there. So someone like this, it does make sense. I promise I'm not going to like the next person on this list, but, like, I wouldn't be upset with us signing any of these guys. Yeah. They're good this depth is, pieces. You nailed it. This is a depth piece, and anytime you can get a quality guard, center backup piece, I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm all for it, and I just don't know what we have in the room, and and that's – so yeah, he's a guy that like, yeah, man, like, what are we, what are we doing? If we can get him on a cheap one year deal? Absolutely. And then the last guy, Craig is uh Cole Beasley. Yeah. And this is the guy I should like, right? Because he's <laughs> produced and he's done a good job. I, I see no need for him right now. No. We have a Monroe St. Brown in the slot. Uh, he's backed up by Khalif Raymond already. Who's, I mean, had a career year last year. Cole Beasley is getting older and older and older. I mean, like if you're going to go sign Cole Beasley at 33 years old, why not just have Tom Kennedy make the team? <laughs> and so I don't, yeah. I know that sounds bad and he's produced well with the bills, but the bills have so many weapons. Of course he has, you know, I mean, he's the security blanket, but we already have two security blankets. So I don't think this one makes sense to me. Nope. That's an easy one for, for both of us. Uh, we've got plenty of depth at wide receiver all of a sudden, right? And and that just looks like a slot guy that if there's any part of our wide receivers that we really know, it's St. Brown um, and then Khalif Raymond. I mean, those are like our slot little guys that are book it. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think, Craig, the, it's interesting to see who's still available and kind of where they fit. And really, yeah. what I also don't know how much money we have. No, I don't either. And, you know, yeah. and I think it's tight. But you start looking around, it's like we're, we're, we're a lot better off. We don't have, you know, terrible needs, but um, there's a couple guys that, like I wouldn't mind. We'll see if they even make the team. If they make the team, yeah. great. We got depth. But, uh, hey, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you haven't subscribed, means you get our latest videos when they come out. And, um, Craig, anything else that you have for this? No, I think it's just an understanding of like, hey, I think some of these free agents will stay on the market. And we might not make a move in the next few weeks or whatever. I mean, obviously, right. but as um, injuries start to pile up, um, whether it's in August or even before, whether it's OTAs, like if you get a couple of injuries or a freak injury somewhere, that's when I would maybe expect a free agent name to fly off the board. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, mm -hmm. I think player acquisition wise, we're going to be pretty quiet for a while and see kind of where injuries so. and the chips fall. So, um, yeah. yeah, make sure you subscribe and we'll see all of you on the next one. See you.